Yeah, okay. Um, this talk will be about my journey in implementing proper entity support for PolyMC and how I've made code that can analyze entity renders. This will be a pretty technical talk, but I'll try my best to keep it understandable, at least for someone with a bit of programming experience. Um, before diving off the deep end, I'd like to handle some context first. If I can aim at the button. Yes. Um, I'm the developer of PolyMC, a um, project that attempts to make other mods server-side compatible. Um, what this entails is that PolyMC will, for example, uh, replace every single item on the server with a vanilla item, and then retexture that item using custom model data and add everything to a resource pack. The end result is that the item looks exactly the same whether you have the mod installed or you're using a vanilla client with a resource pack. Um, PolyMC does something similar for blocks and attempts to do something for GUIs and entities as well. Um, that last one will be the focus here. In order for PolyMC to display modded things, it needs to know what they look like. For items and textures, they, um, this is easy. Uh, mods actually just contain resource packs, and for items and blocks, they just put JSON files in the right location. Um, th these files can just be copied over to the resource pack, and that'll work. Um, but for entity models, this isn't the case. At the moment, PolyMC can't know what an entity looks like. It has all of the stuff ready in the API to start replacing entities, but it can't do much automatically. So let's take a look at how the average entity gets rendered. Oh gosh, that's unreadable. Um, never mind, but this is the client initializer, and that's where the um, entity render gets. Uh, registered as well as an entity model. We'll get to the model later, but let's first focus on the entity uh, renderer. Uh, of course, the fact that this happens in the client initializer is already pro a problem because PolyMC runs on the server and client initialization doesn't get run there. Most of the classes needed for this don't even exist on the server. Um, but let's first take a look at the entity renderer before getting to that problem. Um, <laughs> um, the entity renderer defines a piece of code that gets run whenever Minecraft wants to draw an entity on the screen. This piece of code is the sole thing that determines what an entity looks like. This is the, an average example of an uh, entity rendering code. Unfortunately, it is illegible, but um, we'll deal with that. Uh, other entities will have different code, but for the sake of an example, we'll use this one. Uh, for some of you who uh, have never written rendering code before, uh, the matrix stack is quite an important thing. Um, the TLDR is that it stores transformations. Um, every single thing you render, if you um, render, yeah. if you add a, like a downwards transformation with a matrix stack, then everything you render with that matrix stack is now slightly lower. You can also scale things, rotate things, etc. All the positionings and rotations of every cube that Minecraft renders is determined by a matrix stack. So it's quite important for how a entity looks. This is only a small excerpt, but the entity rendering method does a bunch of stuff. For example, it adds a rotation depending on where the entity is facing, uh, and it also rotates the entity to be lying down if it's in a bed. Uh, it does a bunch of this stuff. Um, some mods will, might not use this code, some mods will add their own behavior into this, and that behavior could be anything, it could be any arbitrary code. A uh, modded entity might display differently based on what dimension it is in, or it might change size depending on its health. The point is, we need to be, be able to handle any situation. 
Now, let's skip ahead a bit in this excerpt. It has a bunch more behavior, but eventually it handles control over to the um, entity model we saw before. Don't be fooled, this entity model separation makes the code cleaner, but it, it still contains arbitrary code, so it's basically irrelevant. Uh, not even all vanilla entities use this system, and certainly not all modded entities. Uh, but for the sake of example, uh, let's switch to my entity model. Uh, it contains one single cube. It's defined uh, here. It's a 16 by 16 by 12 cube. And in the top right corner, you can see it in game. I got a professional texturing artist to make this wonderful debugging texture. Um, here's the rendering method. And this rendering method is simply a wrapper for the method I'm actually interested in. Uh, um, presentation isn't working, but that method is the render cubite method, which takes in a cube, which is, it, it only stores the size of the cube. Um, and the size is pretty much fixed. And it takes in a matrix stack to posi position, scale, rotate that cube. Um, okay, what were we doing again? Okay, we need to find a way a, to extract all of this information out of this, these, this Java code. First things first, if we want to find the um, entity Renderer, we need to find it first. Recall that it is... Uh, where are we? Recall that it's um, registered here in the initializer. And we can't run. We don't have access to that. Um, could start up a Minecraft client and let it run till initialization. But that will take a while. Instead, we're going to write a custom JVM to handle this. Um, when a mod is compiled, what's stored inside the jar isn't the code you wrote. Instead, it's compiled to Java bytecode. Uh, I'm not going to go too far into details, but the TLDR is that it's a list of instructions. For, for example, the iAd instruction takes in the uh, two integers that were last produced and add the, adds them together. It's the JVM's task to execute each of these instructions in order. If we encounter this add instruction, we can grab the last two values, let's say a one and a one, and then we can output a known two. Just adding some basic instructions like this means you can already execute a bunch of programs. And I've got a little trick. Say we stray too far from the client initializer and we encounter some weird internal method which requires complex stuff. Well, we can, instead of returning a known value, we can return an unknown value. Basically saying, we gave up executing this method, we don't know what it returned. Note that normal JVMs don't have this. It's different from being null. If something not is null, then we know it's null. If something is unknown, it might be null, but we've got no clue. Um, how I've represented this is to create like a class uh, that either stores a known value of x or a unknown value and this is how all things in the jvm are um, stored uh, now we're ready to execute the client initializer inside of our custom jvm and we don't have to worry about this causing weird errors or trying to start rendering something or any other side effects. It can only do what we told our virtual machine to do. And when our virtual machine hits, uh, hits one of the register instructions, um, we can just log what it registered and store those values for later. So now we've got the entity in renderer and now we can start analyzing it. Let's take a quick look at what we need again. Um, what we need to know is which cubes are being rendered. 
This means size and most importantly the texture. This needs to resolve to a finite set of cubes because each of these needs to be added into an item model which is then added to the resource pack. Um, luckily I don't think it's possible for a mod to have infinite amounts of different cubes unless they're doing something really really cursed. Secondly we need to know where that cube is being rendered. This means the scaling rotation and translation. We don't need to worry about these aspects individually though, they're all stored in the matrix stack. Um, these last values are more interesting than the first because they aren't a fixed number. Um, say you have a pig, um, the uh, direction this pig's head is facing isn't fixed. Um, it <laughs> depends on the, well, the direction in which it is looking. Um, you can't say that it's like 45 degrees because, well, that would be inaccurate. It might be 45 degrees at some point, but it's not 45 degrees constantly. Um, how we could think about this is that we need to enumerate all possible ways in which the entity rendering function could call that render cube out function. And um, and we need to figure out how the matrix stack passed into that function came to be. Luckily, I didn't go write a small virtual machine for nothing. Um, you know that unknown value, representing values that are completely unknown? We can expand on that. Um, how about a value representing something that's not known currently, but will be known later? such as the entity itself. Because we don't know any of the properties of the entity yet. How is that pig flying? Okay, I'm not going to worry about that. Um, we, we don't know any of the properties of the entity yet. Uh, we want to see how the renderer behaves for any possible entity, such that we can create a resource pack that can deal with any possible state the entity is in. Let's grab an example. This is some pseudo. Uh, yeah. Oh no, is it not? Yes, this is some uh, pseudocode. Um, the cube is created inside the JVM, so we always know it. Um, it's just a known value. Um, And let's move on to the next line. Uh, we don't know what the entity is, so the entity will just be a mocked value. Um, we do know its class, which is quite important, but nothing else. Um, next, we are uh, accessing a field of the entity, um, the health. We don't know what the health is either, so we'll create like a mocked field which stores the health and will store the fact that it comes from the entity. Um, but besides that, we don't know anything else. Um, let's see if any of these slides are actually working. None of the slides are working, so we're going here. Um, next up. We're um, dividing the health by two. We can do a similar trick there, creating a math operation and returning that. Um, and uh, storing the fact that we're de dividing the health by two, but still not getting into any concrete numbers. Um, as you can imagine, these um, values can get nested very deeply. Um, and after that, just looking, my slides are completely broken. Um, well, we now know that um, this function renders a cube at, um, and we know the location 
we know that it's uh, scaled with health divided by two. And this handles basically everything, except um, if statements. If statements are really annoying because you can't execute the if statement because it might, might maybe it's supposed to not execute. You, you don't know if it's supposed to execute. The only, um, the only option you have is to both execute it and not execute it. You're going to go down both paths. This is a pain. Um, you need to copy the entire virtual machine state. Um, and you need to let both of them run to completion. And you need to keep track of um, which calls happens in which branch. And you, you're going to get a lot of branches. Uh, this, the little test entity I made, um, it does approximately 40,000 code paths. Um, it be, this is because it reuses the vanilla renderer and uh, the vanilla renderer checks for things like is the entity named Dinnerbone or is the entity sleeping or whatever. Uh, yes, this, this will run into the halting problem. Luckily, most renderers do complete. Um, if you have a renderer that doesn't complete, something's wrong with your renderer. Um, but even with all of these branches, what we're doing is completely doable. Uh, PolyMC has a functioning um, API for renderers. And um, it wasn't too hard to plug that into the, um, into what the information we got here. Um, let's see if we can, here are some results. This is the snail from lovely snails. Uh, textures aren't working yet because I didn't have enough time. Um, but as you can see, it is working. Um, in the top left corner, we have a regular snail. In the bottom left corner, we have a dinner boned snail. Um, and because of the way that we are actually analyzing the entity renderer, um, this means all custom behavior is working, which means that um, if uh, the snail is threatened, it will actually go into its little house. And that's all working. Um, I've the snail is going backstage. Get in. Nah. Um, of course, there was a bunch of... Um, uh, no, it's fine to let the snail wander around. I, I don't care. Um, of course, there was a bunch of trouble along the way. Um, I had to do a few optimizations. Um, and so you have like sometimes you have a situation like this code um, where um, it checks the same thing in multiple places. Um, this usually is in a different method, but nevertheless, it does check the same thing twice. Um, of course, we don't need to create four different paths to represent this. Two is enough. Um, so what I do is basically, if we're going to go down a path, we check if we branched on that condition already. And if we did, then we just ignore it and take the previous results. Um, Another situation is this situation. Um, you might think that the code on the left doesn't happen. Like nobody would write this kind of code. That is true, but the Java compiler will actually transform your code to be um, looking something like this. Um, in the situation on the left, we don't actually have to branch. 
because we're basically we could basically just return a mocked object which contains the result of x equals zero. Um, as for the right hand side, the code in the branch does do something, but it doesn't uh, influence the rest of the program's execution. Uh, assuming this method doesn't modify the matrix stack, assuming the met ma uh, method doesn't modify the matrix stack. Um, so we'd only need to split into two branches temporarily and after this statement um, finishes, we can just merge them back together. Um, this isn't something that's implemented in my JVM yet, but I would like to implement it. Um, by the way, this strategy here is called SSG. Um, and the thing I was doing with values is called symbolic execution. Um, just if you want to Google that. I, I didn't invent it. I did manage to come quite far without checking the Wikipedia page for it though. Um, so yeah, it's currently functional. Um, it, it does take a while for um, the um, snail to do its thing. Um, the snail has 1,540,000 different paths it takes approximately. That's quite a lot. Um, I don't think that's an issue with the um, method itself, but more with my implementation of it. Like I said, I, I don't have SSG implemented yet. Um, it, it can be done faster. Um, and yeah, th that's that. Um, let me, yes, some use cases. Um, of course, the fact that we have insight into the client initializer is already a lot better than what we had previously. And it's useful for a lot of things, actually, um, besides just um, the entity rendering. Um, for example, we can now determine um, which render layer a block is on, which we couldn't do before. And that's really nice. Um, other use cases might be to um, add compat for bedrock. Uh, add entity modded my, uh, Java entities to bedrock via Geezer. Um, the same process can be done to block entity renderers as well. And um, maybe uh, we could even do automatic instancing of entities. I don't know, I'm not a client side developer. Um, I've got no clue if that's possible, but hey. Um, And yes, um, I would like to request you all to pay a homage to the lovely normal matrix that's in the code. Gotta love the normal matrix. It's the best piece of code ever. Um, and here's some uh, nice bugs. Um, I, I did torture some snails slightly. No, no snails were significantly harmed during making this. Um, any questions? That's my uh, last slide. Are we? Apparently I talked quite quickly because it's only uh, half past. Um, we've got one question. Are there any known renderers that don't halt? Um, Yes, it's called while true, um, but um, I, I don't think any of those renderers are used in production. Um, why do I need a custom JVM? Um, there are symbolic um, JVMs that do symbolic execution available. Uh, I just didn't use them. Um, the, 
Yeah, that, it was mostly just because I created the custom Java, Java virtual machine for fun. Um, but I also don't know if um, other symbolic execution JVMs would apply to this. I do have my own logic to handle um, downloading the client mod, uh, uh, no, sorry, the client Minecraft jar. Um, and running the function is in those. Um, and it is of course nice to be able to um, modify all pieces of the JVM. Um, a normal JVM that won't work because it can't do symbolic execution. Um, how does your optimization for pitch conditions work with impure methods? Um, it, it should work fine because it checks if the um, the parameters are the exact same. Um, so if you assign anything differently and try to use it in a comparison, that will be different and it will take another branch. Um, thank you. Um, Side side world in jar. Surf side world in jar would be a lot easier than this because, well, if you coded it manually, because you could just um, create indeed block displays. Um, uh, doing it automatically, I, I I don't know if the symbolic execution engine will ever be able to handle that. Um, it it doesn't like. Uh, looping on um, things which have an unknown size. Because if you think how a loop works, you're usually going to do something like, well, internally it will um, uh, do something like, um, well, I below uh, list dot size. We don't know the size of the list, and if we don't know the size of the list, every time we enter that condition, we will create a new branch, and that will happen infinitely. Um, luckily, most entity renderers don't loop on things, so it's fine. But uh, do note that that's a limitation. Um, what made you to get started writing mods in this way? Uh, uh, at some point I had the idea for PolyMC uh, and I just kept going with it. Um, I, I, I don't tend to add I tend to add more fun things than usual uh, than useful things. Uh, I, I just uh, had this idea and decided to go code it. Um, how well is Petro compatibility right now using policy? Um, for some reason, this is like the most asked question for PolyMC. Um, my official statement is it, it doesn't support Petro. Um, there's a um, a lot of hacks inside of PolyMC that are meant to um, do um, work around things on the Java client. Um, those just won't work on Bedrock. Um, of course, the, what, what PolyMC does, um, replacing uh, modded items with vanilla items, those will transfer over to Geezer. Um, but yeah, you, you can, it, it kind of does things, but I wouldn't call it working using PolyMC. Do note that the Geezer devs, I believe, are working on something like PolyMC currently. Um, what's SSG? SSG means basically, um, well, you saw the example of um, this slide, yes, um, 
the example on the left, um, SSG would simply summarize this without creating an extra branch. Um, I, I actually forgot what it stands for. Um, I no SSA is no, it's not uh, SSA. This is a term specifically in um, uh, a little bit of symbolic execution. Um, is execution of the rendering done once and cached? Um, it, it is done once. It's even saved to the disk. So um, it's just done once in general. Um, it, it can't be done every frame. Um, it, it takes an embarrassingly long time to um, actually do this, um, which probably is because my JVM isn't optimized very well, but it, it's still embarrassingly long. Um, are we lagging or is it seems the server is lagging? Um, we've got a question. Any plans for re ah, there we go. Um, any um, uh, there was a question before. Any plans for um, reducing the amount of code paths? Uh, yes, SSG should reduce the amount of code paths. I don't know how drastically, um, but it, it should do so. Um, otherwise, I just have to make my JVM more efficient so it can do those code paths in less time. Um, what exactly does the server see custom entities as? Um, custom entities are simply custom entities. Um, PolyMC doesn't change anything about the server. It operates purely on a packet level. Um, if you were on a server and you wanted to slash set block, a modded block, then you just use the slash set block command. Um, so the server just sees a snail as a snail. Um, it's the original mod code that's running. Um, this has a big advantage. It means that none of the hacks that PolyMC does will ever influence the um, actual world. Um, if something goes wrong, it only will only look wrong on the client. Um, the client sees these as um, display entities. Um, every single cube gets replaced with an item model and um, we just copy over the matrix stack placed in the uh, item display and it, it kind of works. Um, Would it be better to do this? Um, I do not know what this means. Um, if the person who asked this question, I, I genuinely don't know what this is. Um, are your missing slides uh, available for viewing anywhere? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just um, send, o send over a zip file in the um, Blankedcon Discord um, uh, with the original SVG files um, in there. It, you, you didn't miss much. It was just some extra uh, variants of slides we already had. Um, what was the name of the pig? Um, the pig was named Bob. Um, one of my friends wondered if the mod itself runs in a JVM or if it just starts up a JVM. Well, PolyMC just runs on the JVM, like the, the regular JVM, um, which runs the rest of Minecraft. Um, and I have implemented my custom JVM in Java, um, but it still runs on the same JVM that my... Okay, um, the, 
the entity is run in my custom JVM, which is run on the normal JVM that also runs Minecraft. Yes. I, I hope that's clear. Um, how are custom inventories and interfaces implemented? Um, it's currently, currently has nothing to do with the, um, uh, dynamic, um, the, the symbolic ex uh, execution. Um, it, it just, uh, check it, it iterates over the slots and it just opens a chest UI. Um, currently it's really janky. The um, slots in the chest, chest UI have no relationship to the position of the slots in the original uh, GUI. Um, I plan to uh, improve that. It can definitely be improved. Um, possibly using this um, symbolic execution, you could maybe do something um, to get the textures used. But um, yeah, the, the current implementation isn't great. It's just barely functional. Um, I just haven't got to uh, doing this. Um, what happens with something complex like a create contraption? Um, it, it breaks. Um, create contraptions, um, well, they, um, first of all, they, I believe they have a list of blocks that they render. The size of the list is unknown and you'll get into that bug. Um, so it, it'll just, uh, time out at some point. It, it can't do create contraptions, um, especially with the flywheel rendering. It, it just can't. Um, interesting note. If you do it manually, you can get create contraptions working. Um, last year, BlanketCon, we had a live demo of um, create contraptions working with PolyMC. This was even before block entities um, got added. So we did everything using um, armor stands. It was glorious. Um, how many parts is a model generated this way? Um, currently, um, it's, um, one model per cube. I'm planning on optimizing that. Um, I just need to figure out the math that is needed to find out, um, which cubes can be combined. Um, th that's definitely someone, th something that needs to be done, um, Otherwise, we'll get a lot of uh, item display entities. Um, it's just math. I don't like math. Um, actually, I love math, but this is things I need to code, and then I don't like it anymore. Uh, <laughs> uh, keep in mind, we don't have any information about bones. Um, we only know there's a cube. And this is how its matrix is created. Um, also interesting, um, models have quite strict requirements on how they can be rotated. Um, you, uh, I'm not, you can only increment it in, I believe it's increments of 25 or 12 and a half degrees. So that's an issue. Um, you can work around it. Um, 22.5? Is it 22.5? That might be true. Um, okay, 22.5. Um, but you can work around this with shaders. Um, but still, it's it's not ideal. Um, it's not plus you went. No. Yeah. Um, I can't open my inventory. Um, would this also apply to block entities? Uh, not at the moment, but it should be able to um, be done quite easily. Um, 
is PolyMC compatible with JI, REI, MEI, uh, EMI? Um, if you mean installing ME on the server and expecting expecting it to show up on the client, no, um, it you you can't actually do that at all. Um, the closest you can do is Polydex, which works amazingly and um, is basically all you need. Um, if you mean viewing um, custom uh, modded blocks and items, if you've got ME installed on the client, um, then yes, that does work via Polymer uh, created by Petbox. I believe it does some kind of syncing. Um, and yes, it, it does work for all server entities. Oh, what's the snail's name? It's also Bob. They're both called Bob. Um, and I believe that's all the questions. Yes. Um, unless this, okay. Um, when if this get implemented for block entities? Uh, much like Xenilio, Fabric will most likely become plug and play with PolyMC. Um, yes. Yeah, basically, yeah. The, yeah. Um, assuming all of the calls go through, um, we can, of course, you, you don't have to only detect rendering cuboids. Um, you can also detect it when they try to render uh, blocks or items or even text. And you can um, port those to the right uh, entities. So yeah, this should work. Um, both. Um, wh what I've been doing is entity renderer. Um, but this can be done used, um, this can be applied to block entity renders as well. Um, I believe that's all. Yes. Let me Yeah, we don't have any questions anymore, so um, that'll be it. Uh, thank you. <laughs>